Chapter 18, Chapter 16, The Mad Circus Chapter 16, The Mad Circus All right, guys. I'm not going to waste any time with bullshit today. There's some things you need to know. Ryu was sitting at the head of Duke Kilgore's meeting table now. It was later in the day, after the previous conference had adjourned, and everybody had gone their separate ways for some time. Eventually, he had called the members of his team back in, and they sat around the table now, watching him quietly, expectantly. Ray was there as well, though not Kay. All of them knew something was going on, and some had more of an idea of what it was than others. This is going to be hard for me, so I'd like to say it all at once, and that'll be it, Ryu continued, staring at his hands, flat on the table before him. If I can just get it out, without interruptions, I'd be grateful. I'll field questions later, but I don't. I don't think I'll be able to do this if I don't just keep going. Nobody said anything, and after a moment, he continued. I was born in the town of Gate. It's not much of a town, but it's all I knew, and I was pretty happy there, at first. My father was Gaynor Battison, the local priest of St. Eva, and my mother Valerie. He was at least 30 years older than she was, but they loved each other, and me, too. And my little sister, Yua, when she came along. That didn't last long, though. Soon after she was born. Demons attacked the town. Hordes of them. Everybody's eyes widened at that, but none of them spoke. My father was a black mage, one of incredible power, Ryu continued numbly. And my mother a white mage. They fought back, to defend the town, but they were losing, until... He took a deep breath. Until a dragon came. A white dragon, gigantic and powerful, who helped my father drive the demons off. There was a door, set in this mountain behind the town, and that was why it was called Gate. And that was where the demons came from. So the dragon flew over the doors, and fell asleep, in order to seal them from another incursion. My mother never came back from that fight. They knew, then, just as he had figured it out himself as soon as he had realized his dragon clan heritage. Even Jean realized it. But still they remained silent, and he continued. I was told my mother died that night, and given this, Ryu said, holding up the dragon's tear. It's magical. Reads people's emotions, especially towards whoever's holding it. Not their minds, just how they feel. A couple more years passed, me and Yua grew. And then one day, when I was seven, I went out into the fields behind gate. When I came back, my father and sister were gone, and nobody else remembered them. Nobody remembered me. There was a new priest living in the church, one who everybody claimed had always been there, and I... I was a stranger, in the only home I had ever known. Everybody's eyes flickered to bow then, and he nodded slightly. Yeah, Ryu admitted. That was the day I met Bao. I pretended to be... To be like him. And left gate with him. I couldn't stay there. Living there, without my family, with everybody I knew treating me like... I couldn't take it. He closed his eyes. That was the night we met that demon. Baru Berry. We found him in a cave, and he crushed us, but he let us live. Just left us there. The next day, we set off towards the north, two kids on the road. Eventually, we made it to hometown, and joined the Rangers Guild, and that was that. But that's not the last of it. He opened his eyes again, staring straight ahead. Baru Berry. When we met, I knew him. Ever since the night my mother left. Whenever I slept, I heard his voice in my head, and saw his eye. That one dim third eye, always open, always watching me in the darkness, as he talked to me. Before we met him, and after. Every time I've slept since then, every single time. He's always there. He was there last night. He'll be there tonight. Watching me. Talking to me. What? Does he say? Cat whispered after a long moment of silence. More, Ryu whispered. We need more power. God needs more power. Give yourself to our God. Pray to God. Praise God. Sacrifice your body and soul to God. You are destined to become God's power. He frowned, then, aware that that wasn't completely right. The words had been changing, slightly but definitively, over the recent months. It's not always exactly the same. Sometimes it's a little different. But that's the gist of it. Everybody shivered, even Jean. 
I've tried to put it behind me, all these years, Ryu wound down, staring at his hands again. I always knew there was something about that. That would come back eventually. But I thought I could run away from it, if I just tried hard enough. That if I forgot it all, it would forget me, and I could just be a normal guy, with a normal life. Get some people together I could trust, and who trusted me, and make a living busting heads. Now, I'm not so sure that's going to work anymore. He waited a moment more, then stood, and left quietly, not looking at them. He could tell, all the same, that every eye in the room was on him as he departed. There was a balcony, up on the top floor of the manor, and he went up there, with luck, it wouldn't be occupied. It wasn't, and he sat up there, alone with his thoughts, to stare at the sky for some time until it began to take in the fire of sunset. That was when they started to come, two by two, to speak with him about their future. Hey, man, Bao said, as he and Kat walked out onto the balcony. Doing all right. I've been better, Ryu answered honestly. Can't blame you for that, Kat admitted. You're doing a lot better than I would, if I was in your shoes. I think you would do okay. Ryu glanced at Bao. Sorry about not being straight with you for all these years. It's cool, man, Bao assured him. I'd have done the same thing. He shook his head ruefully, grinning slightly. Honest? When you told me all that? I was actually kind of glad that you could at least remember your parents. I wish I could, but they're... They're just a blur, by now. I always thought it was the same for you. I'm not gonna get pissed because it's not. Bo's parents, a forest clanswoman and a grass runner clansman, had had him in violation of the global laws against inter-clan reproduction, and they had been executed for it when he was very young. Same here, Kat agreed. Always thought that was something the three of us had in common, you know? The whole parents thing. Kat's parents weren't necessarily dead, they had simply abandoned her as soon as she was able to walk and talk. Apparently, it was tradition among the Warren clan. Rand and Stan don't talk about their pasts, but I'm pretty sure they knew their parents. I don't mind being wrong, though. Not about that. She smiled wistfully. Thanks, guys. Ryu smiled as well, though his heart wasn't in it. So. What do you think we should do? Kat and Bao exchanged a glance. That's up to you, man, Bao told him, and Kat nodded. You're the one who this Baru Berry freak is stalking. It's your call whether we go take him on, or try and lose him. No, it's not, Ryu disagreed. We're all in this together, and this decision doesn't just affect me. If we take the job, and go down this road, it's all of us who might not walk back off of it. He shook his head. I need to know, guys. Then I say we go for it, Kat said, sharp and sudden. Running away from our problems. That's not what I do. It never was. She glared out at the sun. I don't give a crap about this destiny bullshit, but it looks like it doesn't return the feeling. If we just keep running, it'll keep following us, for the rest of our lives. I say we take care of the problem, the best way we know how. Her hands grasped the rail on the balcony, and there was a creaking before she remembered her own strength and relaxed. Find all these assholes, and break their heads until there's nobody left to screw with us. I'm with her, Bao said, less heated but no less serious. These freaks have been coming after us from the get-go. Trout messing with us, August trying to kill Cat, Joker kidnapping Nina. And Kawadaro most of all. They're not going to stop, no matter what we do, unless we take them out. There was only a faint quiver in his voice as he continued. Even Baru Berry. If that's what it takes to get out of this destiny bullshit. Let's do it. He'd rip us apart, man, Ryu told him. You remember. That guy. He made Kawadaro look like nothing. So we find a way to beat him before we go in, Bao replied coolly. Nothing's impossible, man. Look at what you did. How likely was it that you would be able to track that girl down after that long a time and clear my name? But you did it. I don't care about the risks. What I care about is this destiny bullshit, and what it's doing to you. He put a hand on Ryu's shoulder. That's what's ripping you apart, man. This whole mess. I'm not a brave man. I know I'm not. But I don't care what I have to do to get you out of all this. If I had to face that freak Baru Berry one-on-one, -on -one, I'd do it. Same here, Kat agreed. You're what's important, Ryu. This situation, with me and Nina. She shook her head angrily. We'll work it out eventually. 
but no matter which way it turns out. I can't stand seeing you like this. This isn't who you are. Whatever it takes, to help you move on, I'll do it. And if Baruberry, or some other shithead, kills us instead, that's just the way it rolls. I'd rather die fighting than live running. Thanks, guys, Ryu murmured, and they both smiled. It was the only thing he could think of to say. We'll let the others have their chance now, Bao said after a long moment. About time, we went and got some dinner anyways. The two of them were the hunters of the team, and were used to bringing in a deer or boar for the group's dinner by now. Might have to get two, considering how many mouths we've got here right now, Kat pointed out. We should probably get to that, all right. Grabbing the rail again, she vaulted over it, spinning gracefully before landing on the ground below with perfect grace. Show off! Bao yelled, prompting laughter from below, before turning to leave. See you around, buddy. Ryu waved to them both, but remained silent, and it wasn't long before another pair wandered out to join him. Let me guess, Sten drawled as he led Rand out onto the balcony. Bao and Kat both voted yes, right. I suppose it wasn't hard to see that one coming, Ryu admitted. Jean aside, they're the biggest optimists we have right now. And he's such a wild card, who knows what he's going to vote, Rand muttered. For all we know, he'll suggest we hire somebody else to do this for us. Ryu had to snort at that. You've been hanging out with me too much, Sten told him with a slight grin that didn't last long. Or maybe you're just in a weird mood. Think we all are, after today. Some pretty heavy shit going down. That's one way of putting it, Ryu agreed. So? Break it to me. What are your votes? Sten and Rand exchanged a long glance. It's kind of complicated, boss, Sten admitted eventually. Look. When you get right down to it, I'm a selfish bastard. This isn't about me, and I know it's not, but when I think about all of this, all I'm thinking is what Ray said. About how there's probably another demon lord stirring shit up down in Highland. He shook his head. As far as I'm concerned, my past is dead. But there are a lot of people back there who'll know me if I show up, and they probably won't see it that way. That's a valid point, Ryu admitted. You've got the right to watch out for your own skin, and you're right. If we take this job, we'll probably wind up going in there eventually. I can't go back to Highland, boss, Sten told him flatly. I can't. And that's not how groups like this work. People don't just get to opt out of jobs when everybody else is going in. Sure, I'd like to just cheer you on from back in the ruins, but... That won't be enough. He glanced down at his feet. If the vote goes to take the job, then I'll... I'll figure something out. But I don't like it. I'm voting we turn this one down. I've kind of got a similar problem, Rand agreed. Not exactly the same. Where I came from, before I hit the road. It's not like that. Not that bad. I just left one day, because... Well, it was a personal problem. He frowned, looking thoughtful. I don't like the thought of some demon lord mucking around in farmland. But I don't like the thought of going back there, either. Not because I'll get in trouble. I just spent too much of my life there already. Don't need to waste any more. That's not all of it, though, is it? Ryu guessed shrewdly. Nope, Ren said, shaking his head. This kind of stuff. Your ranger buddies were right, chief. It's over our heads. Those demons can ramble all they want about all the destiny bullshit, but I'm a simple kind of man, and I'm just in this to make a living and watch out for my buddies. If I'd known this was going to be part of the deal. He broke off for a moment before continuing. Well, I'd still have signed up in the end, but I'd have been a lot more cautious about it. This is a real mess, Chief. I'm not gonna quit, but I'm with Sten. I vote we pass, and keep our heads down. I get that too. Ryu nodded. I'm not making up my mind yet, but... I'm thinking a lot of the same things. He chuckled wearily. Sometimes I still don't really believe it, you know? Me Dragon Clan. Yeah, right. I'm some bum who's good with a sword. Okay, so we're not just a couple of cowards. Sten exhaled. Good to know. Please. Ryu snorted. You saw Kawadara. And you fought that thing. We've all got a lot of problems, but cowardice isn't one of them. Thanks, Rand grunted. I think. We'll get out of your hair, then. 
Sten chuckled. Good luck, boss. They both nodded briefly before going back inside, and Ryu leaned back, waiting for the next pair. Monsieur Ryu? Jean asked, leaning out through the door a few minutes later. A moment of your time, please. Be honest, son, Nero told him, pushing past to clomp out onto the balcony. It's gonna take more than a moment. He turned to glance at Ryu, eyes glittering under heavy gray brows. Been a long day, I take it. Sure feels like it, Ryu admitted. Before you ask, so far the vote is tied, two for two. Not hard to figure out who's who, Nero grunted. Well then, perhaps I should add my own to the count, yes. Jean walked over to the rail and looked out at the sunset. Monsieur Ryu. I am not an intelligent man. I know this. Handsome? Yes. Brave? Undoubtedly. Skilled? But of course. Charming? Most definitely. Poetic? Who could doubt? Artistic? Beyond comparison. But intelligent? No, I think not. He shrugged. No man is perfect, yes? What I am saying, Monsieur Ryu, is that this issue... It is a complicated one, requiring much thought. And thought is not a field in which I have much expertise. You've been trying, anyways, though, haven't you? Ryu guessed gently. I have made a valiant effort, yes, Jean admitted. And I have come to a conclusion. You are a good man, Mon Ami, and that is a rare thing. A better man than you give yourself credit for, I think. All of our friends are good men and women. And though I know it is naive, I cannot help but believe that in the end, no matter how dire circumstances may grow, that good men will always triumph. He looked back over his shoulder at Ryu and Nero. We slook a water I am sure that we will be able to do the same with all our foes. Monsieur Ryu. I honestly believe we can do this. Three for yes, then. Ryu nodded, smiling slightly. I'm not sure I'm that optimistic, Jean, but I'm not going to tell you that you're wrong. You might have a point. It's certainly one worth voting for. He glanced at Nero. And you? I'm staying out of this, the old man told him bluntly. What's the word? Abstainin'. Somebody's got to, or else we'll probably end up with a tie, and that's no good. Could always ask Ray to break it, if it comes to that, Ryu pointed out. Nah. Nero shrugged. Bane honest here? I don't really have much of an opinion. Gave those up a long time ago. Stumping over to the rail next to Jean, he looked down at the beach below. If you want my advice all the same, though. Whichever way this ends up going, go with it, with everything you got. Don't hold back, don't doubt what you're doing, and don't have no second thoughts or regrets. That'll always catch up to you, in the end, if you let it. Good advice, Ryu agreed, idly wondering once more just how many interesting things had happened in the old man's life before he had joined them. I appreciate it. No charge. Nero grinned. Come on, Jean. Long as we're out here, there's a pretty girl who's not, and that ain't right. Ah, but of course. Jean smiled, turning away from the rail. Let us retire to the kitchen, then, and determine what would be the best wine to serve with tonight's meal, yes. The two men walked back in, chatting about food, and Ryu settled back again to wait. It wasn't long. Are we the last ones, then? Ray asked, opening the door courteously for Nina. Pretty much. Ryu nodded. Want to know the vote so far? I'd rather not, Nina declined. And Ray isn't voting. It's not my business, Ray agreed. Besides, my thoughts on the subject are... Somewhat conflicted. And mine aren't. Nina asked Riley, before turning to Ryu, looking hesitant. I'm not quite sure how to say this, Ryu. I suppose the long and short of it is. I'd prefer we didn't take this job. But my reasons for that. They're not what you might think. She shot a worried glance to Ray, who nodded slightly. I'm listening, Ryu said quietly. If we're getting involved in all of this destiny bullshit, as everybody puts it. She shivered. That means that you're that Ryu. Like the ones who ended the Dragon Wars. It means you're the next one in the line. And. There's always a Nina, as well. A Nina Windia. That means that's who I am. She met his eyes then, cool and calm. I like you, Ryu. I like you a lot. 
I have since I first set eyes on you, and I think you feel the same way. If this destiny bullshit is controlling our lives, then... Then, that has nothing to do with us. It's because you're Ryu, and I'm Nina. And that... I don't like that. I've been wondering about that, too, Ryu admitted. It hadn't seemed natural, just how heavily he had fallen for her at one glimpse, especially considering he had already been moving towards something with Kat at the time. Even now, just being in her presence, he couldn't help but think about how beautiful she was, everything about her captivated him. If that's the way it is, though, then it's too late to change it. I know. She sighed. But I can't stop thinking about it, all the same. Besides, I don't like confrontation, when it can be avoided. I never have. Perhaps that's a strange trait for somebody in my line of work, but it's the way I am. If the vote is yes, I'll come along, but I won't like it. She closed her eyes. I don't like any of this, Ryu. I just want... I want to be a normal girl, with normal friends. And... She trailed off. And a normal me, Ryu murmured, reaching around her shoulder with one arm. She accepted the embrace, sliding into it as she turned to face him, and both her arms were around him. Before he knew what he was doing, he was kissing her, lighter and softer than it had been with Kat, but no less intense. She was floating, wings beating, and though she couldn't carry him into the air with her there was a sense almost like she was. She was hesitant, but only for a moment, and then she returned the kiss, and her lips tasted of flowers. It seemed like forever, locked in each other's embrace under the sunset, until Ray coughed politely, regaining both their attention. Ah, oh, geez, Ryu spoke first, breaking the kiss. Sorry about that, Ray. We just... He scratched his head. Yeah. It's entirely understandable, Ray assured him, blushing slightly as he glanced away. Despite his calm words, there was something wistful in his eyes, and Ryu remembered too late that the paladin had a crush on Nina himself, one his vows prevented him from acting upon even if she had returned his feelings. I just wanted to remind you that I was here, before you grew too... excited. That wasn't going to happen, I'm afraid, Nina told him, blushing as well, her green eyes wider than normal. Even if that was... it was... She actually stammered for a moment, then broke off, eyes narrowing abruptly. Wait a second here. If you did that... Kat's kissed you already, hasn't she? Now we're even. She sneaked it when I wasn't looking, Ryu admitted. That wasn't why I did that, though. You know that, right? I didn't think it was, she assured him. All the same, we should leave it at that, until the situation is clarified. She said the same thing, too, Ryu pointed out. She's not as stupid as she thinks she is. Nina smiled again. Even if I think I'll have words with her about sneakiness. If you'll excuse me. She turned and left on foot, black wings folded behind her. I'll take my leave as well, Ray said quietly. You have much to think about, and there's not much help I can give. Hey, Ray. Ryu raised a hand. I know. Ray looked away. Trust me, Ryu, I'm not upset. It's for the best that you're more her type than I am. It would only hurt both of us. As for your other matters, that's business for your team. An outsider has no place influencing your decision, either way. You're not, Ryu told him. An outsider, I mean. If only. Ray sighed, then smiled again. Then again, it seems I'm not the only one here. You seem to have an eavesdropper on the roof. It's only polite that I excuse myself while she takes her turn to speak with you. He turned to the door, and raised a hand in farewell. May Saint Eva guide your path. I'll see you tomorrow. I have. Ryu repeated, then stopped, eyes narrowing, as he realized what Ray had said. Mentally, he ran through a list of suspects, and realized the most likely culprit almost instantly. All right, Dees. Get down here. Busted, his friend muttered, dropping down onto the balcony easily. Knew somebody would spot me eventually. Just how long have you been up there? Ryu demanded, both irritated and amused. Long enough. Dees shrugged. Don't worry, I'm not the kind of girl who blabs, no matter how interesting the things I hear are. She raised an eyebrow. Pretty smooth moves with Nina. I'm almost impressed. Shut up, Ryu growled, feeling his own cheeks heating as he glared down. These were private discussions. 
It was between me and my team. And a paladin of Saint Eva, Dees pointed out, an odd look coming into her eyes. He gets an invite, but I don't? Kind of cold, Vatison. He knows too much for his own good already, Dees, Ryu replied, stumbling for a bit on her name. For the first time, he realized she had never given him or Bao her surname, and wondered idly if Nina knew it. You have a problem with Ray? I'm sure he's a good guy. Dee sighed, turning away from him to lean on the rail. Blue-haired and green-eyed like him, she had always looked older than she was, but as the sunset fell upon her features, it made her look strangely ageless, like somebody who had simply transcended time. I've just never really gotten along well with the Church of Saint Eva. You haven't? Ryu blinked. Hey. You know, I never did see you at a sermon. Never really thought about that before. After a moment, he stood up and walked over to lean on the rail next to her. So what? We're not exactly religiously intolerant in this group. Are you Naaman Dian, then? Rand is, and he and Ray get along fine. Nope. She stared straight ahead. And no, before you ask, I'm not an atheist like Nina, either. It's kind of embarrassing, actually. Why? Ryu frowned. And what's that leave? Sounds like you're not agnostic like Sten and Jean, either. And I don't even know what Nero is, probably variable, so. He trailed off as the light dawned. It's Laudan, isn't it? You follow the dragon god. You could say it runs in my family, Dees admitted, and that was the first time she had ever spoken of that, too. Don't tell anybody. I'm not the type to blab, either, Ryu said carefully. They stood there for some time, leaning on the rail, and Ryu silently contemplated how long he had known Dees, ever since first coming to hometown. Despite all the time they had been friends, there had never been any romantic attraction either way, she was more like a big sister, just as Bao had been kind of like a little brother. Eventually, he spoke again. What do you think I should do? About Nina. Dees raised an eyebrow. Well, there's the situation with Kat to consider too, right? You're going to have to make up your mind between the two eventually. Not that, Ryu growled. I meant about this situation. The one you invited yourself to listen to. I'm not voting either, she joked, then grew somber. I don't know what to tell you, Ryu. It's three for three, which means the final vote's coming down to you. The problem with this sort of thing is once you start riding the tiger, it's not exactly easy getting back off. If you walk this path, you're going to have to see it through to the end of the line, no matter what it takes. Maybe if you do, you'll end up free of it all. Maybe you won't. She turned her head to look into his eyes, her own deep and mysterious. The question is if you want to take that gamble. You're the only one who can answer that. Guess I am, Ryu admitted, looking down at his dragon's tear. Out of curiosity, he aimed it at himself, and saw it turn to a sharp orange, which didn't surprise him. Why me, Dees? I'm nobody special. Just the opposite. I could make a pretty good case for me being a career screw-up. I just don't have the luck somebody going into this sort of thing needs. You have not one, but two girls must guys would kill for a hug from kissing you, and you think you're unlucky. Dee snarked. Gee, aren't we self-deprecating today? Har, har, har. Ryu rolled his eyes. You know what I mean. Guess I do. She looked away again, out at the rising moon. I know you underestimate yourself too much. It's not your fault, Ryu. What happened to you, whatever it is, that you won't let yourself live down? You didn't do anything. That's kind of the point, isn't it? Ryu chuckled bitterly. No, it's not. She shoved him lightly. Look at them, Ryu. Look at their faces, when they talk to you like they did today. It's not just Kat and Nina. Maybe the guys don't feel that way about you, but they still trust you, whatever you do. You think it was a coincidence that the vote came down to you? They all knew it would. They want you to decide, and whatever you decide, they'll trust. Not a single one of them has ever disputed your leadership, and they're never going to. You're their friend, and their leader. They're counting on you, Ryu. Don't let them down because you can't forgive yourself. Why? Ryu whispered, repeating himself. Why me? Because you're you, Dees told him as she turned away, walking back inside. And you're the only one who doesn't understand that. Ryu stayed there for a long time, staring at the moon, before leaving the balcony. He went downstairs to get some food and ale, though everybody else had already eaten, they had left enough for him. Afterwards, he went to bed, still unsure of what his answer would be. 
power. We need more of your power. God needs more of your power. Give yourself to God. Pray to God. Praise God. Sacrifice your bodies and souls to God. You are destined to become God's power. When he woke up the next morning, he had his answer. They had their breakfast, and then filed into the meeting room, just as they had the previous day. Everybody was still here, save for the four rangers who had come with the chief elder, although the other residents of the ruins were starting to look bored, as if wondering why they were even here. The elders of the rangers' guild, on the other hand, had expressions varying from nervous to suspicious to expectant. Especially the chief elder, who simply gave Ryu a look until he stood to address the table. We took a vote, he said bluntly. In the end, it came down to four to three. We've decided to take the case, sir. I was, ah, uh, afraid of that, Elder Allen murmured. Are you, ah, uh, absolutely sure? You saw what that monstrosity did even to experienced rangers like John and Vori. I did. Ryu nodded, looking over the people on his team. And some of my guys had other points, and good ones. He closed his eyes for a moment. But running away never actually solves problems. It just makes them stop affecting you. And sometimes that works, but some problems won't leave you alone unless you make them. Opening his eyes again, he glared down at the table. Besides, I have business to settle with Baruberry, one of these days. Those of you who voted no, I'm sorry. But I'm going to have to ask you to help me out here. The group exchanged a glance, every single one of them smirking. He says it like he expects anything else, Sten commented. Did we not all already tell him we'd go along with whatever he decided? Pretty sure we did. Perhaps he's only being polite, Nina suggested. Although if so, he's in the wrong outfit, I'd say. Why would that be, Mademoiselle Nina? Jean asked, clearly uncomprehending, before shaking his head. Ah, uh, it matters not. We are all with you, Monsieur Ryu. What he said? Kat gave him a thumbs up. Man, if I knew working with rangers meant busting up demons, I'd have joined up myself. Most fun I've had in years. That's not funny, Rand told her, then sighed. I still think we should have just gone underground. But hey, I've been wrong before. Let's give it a shot. Come on, man. Bao grinned at him. After that lecture you gave me about all these hooligans we're surrounded by, now you're acting all doubtful? Give me a break. You should know by now we've all got your back. Not like I'm gonna be the one out there in the field taking the risks, Nero pointed out. So it don't bother me much. Good luck, kids. You're gonna need it. There is still some danger from being associated with this, though, Ryu reminded him, turning to the other civilians from hometown. That's why I wanted all of you here. I was afraid it might come to this, and if it did, you guys deserved to know what you were getting into. Not sure how long some of you wanted to stick around, but... He shrugged. Now it was the three carpenters' turn to exchange a look. Kid, let me tell you something, Rivab eventually said. You know what every real artisan in our line of work dreams of? Building an entire freaking city. That's not just fame, that's going down in history. And you know what we're actually doing back there right now? See previous answer. So you're mercs? Haseko shrugged. Big deal. What's important is that you're okay guys. Far as we're concerned, any suckers come after you back home, you can count on me to man the walls. Once we get walls, anyways. Besides, you ain't really gonna complain about getting your own goddamn city built for you at cost, are you? Ezen laughed. And painted, Lacker added. No way. Bao chuckled. Thanks, guys. So we are going to end up having our own city. Ryu sighed. Great. Wait until Prima hears about this one. Oh, they already have, the chief elder told him. You want my advice? Take that zenny we'll be paying you once you're done here, and buy that land off of the country of Oria. Establish yourselves completely independent. We'll smooth things over with Prima for you, call it a little bonus for taking this off our hands. Thanks, I think. Ryu frowned thoughtfully. Now we just need to figure out how to fill all those houses. Not much of a city if nobody's living in it. You could give all of us our own houses, Sana suggested, and received a whack on the head from Granny for her contribution. 
Just ignore that, the old lady advised, as Ray and Kay took their turn to exchange and look. Go ahead, the paladin told his friend. Ask. I think they'll agree. Mr. Battison, I have a request, Kay said calmly, meeting his eyes. You all know I'm a doctor, and I've been traveling for some time, looking for a place to set up shop. Everywhere I've looked so far hasn't needed any more, though. I was wondering if you would mind if I opened up a clinic in your city. Believe it or not, I was going to ask if you had a steady practice myself, Ryu replied, glancing at the others, who all nodded. Groups like us do well to know a good doctor. White magic is good for the short-term stuff, but for long-term, it's best to get looked at regularly. We don't exactly have much of an economy going at the moment, but that should improve once we get more people. If you're willing to wait for that, pick a house and it's yours. For free. Kay blinked. How about a discount group rate in exchange? Sten suggested slyly. Sound fair to you? Sten, Ray said firmly. I didn't mean much of a discount. Sten protested innocently. Just a little one. If you're willing, perhaps I might be, ah, uh, able to suggest another citizen, Elder Allen told them, raising an eyebrow. Hans is ready to retire, I believe he wants to open up a, ah, uh, general store. I'm sure you could use one. As well as providing us with an in-town connection to the Rangers Guild. Ryu guessed. Just in case. A fringe benefit, Alan assured him. Not like we mind. Bao glanced around the table. Anybody else know any other good prospects? There's Azusa, out around my neck of the woods, Elder Mac muttered thoughtfully, and some of the others nodded. And his shiftless brother McLean. Neither of them's getting old, but they were getting tired of running all around the world. Talking about looking for a place to settle down and focus on hunting and fishing for a living. Old Azusa's still around. Ryu blinked, smiling, looking at Bao. And McLean, too. Man, who would have figured? I'd never have guessed those clowns would still be alive. They were the guys who first got us interested in joining the guild in the first place. Bao snapped his fingers. And hey, somebody's gotta bring in food now that I won't be around, at least until we can get a real economy going. Tell them they can have the houses so long as they keep the population fed, then. Mac grunted. Sounds fair to me. I've actually been meaning to ask, Mrs. Rivab spoke up, getting an encouraging nod from her husband. Once we have an actual population, I'd like to open up a restaurant in town, if that's all right with you. I'd always been sort of a dream of mine. I've got a similar request, Mrs. Haseko added, glancing at her husband. A tavern. Lunkhead here can help me run it once he's done playing builder. And you? Ryu glanced at Eason. Guess I could run a gambling parlor, if my nephew stopped staring at paint all day and helped me out, the carpenter mused. We're really going for the outlaw town, deal, aren't we? Nina asked dryly. A population under two dozen, and we'll already have both a tavern and a casino. No point in building our own city if it's not going to be our kind of place, is there? Kat told her. That's something else to bring up, I think. Ryu glanced at the chief elder. Like they just said, this isn't exactly going to be a law and order kind of place. We're not going to be too picky about who moves in, as long as they play by the rules, and if it comes down to any of them against the rest of the world, we'll be sticking together. Is that going to be a problem? Get real, kid. The chief elder snorted. Why do you think the world didn't mind a place like Bleak for hundreds of years? There are some advantages to having a wretched hive of scum and villainy around. No offense to your families, sirs, and ma'ams. Some folks think those ruins of yours might even be bleak. Far as I'm concerned, that's fate, right there. He narrowed his eyes. I'll ask you one more time, then. You're sure about taking this job? We're sure. Ryu nodded, and knew without looking that every single one of the team had nodded with him. Any advice for us, sir? Yeah. The chief elder steepled his hands. According to John's report, every one of the trees in Gate is dead or dying, except for one. There's a wise tree, up in Gate. How much do you know about the grass men? They're the only clan known who evolved from plants, rather than animals, Nina replied. What's known as the grass man is actually the second stage of a life form whose shape changes dramatically at several points in their extremely long life. The final stage is, in fact, a sentient tree, although only other grass men can communicate with them. 
Due to their low population and little interest in society, they have no presence in Prima, and thus are not recognized as a legal clan, despite generally being much more polite and civilized than most outlaw clans. I get it. Ren snapped his fingers. This wise tree up near gate might know something about what's going on up there, but those guys couldn't find out, because they couldn't talk to it. Bingo. The chief elder nodded. You want my advice, kid? Find a grass man, and talk him into playing translator for you. Hey, wasn't there one of those in a traveling circus? Cat drummed her fingers on the table. Went and saw it a couple months before I met Ryu. We saw it too. Bao glanced at Sylvia and Dees, who nodded. Seemed like a shady bunch of guys, for the most part. Wait a second here. Ryu turned to Ray. You said this conspiracy uses groups like that as their couriers, right? Correct. Ray nodded. You think that the circus in question may be involved? The man in charge was pretty buddy-buddy with Trout, Ryu growled. And they sure as hell weren't running a clean operation. You won't simply be able to bust in and kill them all, though, the chief elder warned them. And finding proof that he's a demon won't go over well. You'll need to either nail them on something else, or do it legally. We'll figure something out, Ryu promised. What's more important is finding out just where that circus is right now. Tunlin, Sten told him. It's the Circus Maxi Tusk, right? They were set up near Windia when I met you guys. Gave me a job offer, since I was doing the whole magician act at the time, but I turned them down. Didn't like the looks of them, hey? Rand guessed. Nah, I ain't too picky about the guys I hang out with, Sten joked. It was because they told me they were going to Tunlin next. I had just been there myself not too long ago, and my act got about as good a reception as selling fried figs would have. That long a trip, they'll probably still be there. Good thing we just got that sea travel thing taken care of, Ryu muttered. All right, then, we're going to the Isle of Tunlin. Sea travel. Ray raised an eyebrow. Don't ask, Kat advised him. You really don't want to know. Will we not have issues communicating? Jean asked. On the Isle of Tunlin, I have heard, they speak entirely through music. That's the locals, Nero grunted. Shouldn't have too much trouble if you just want to talk to the circus folks. All the same, I'd feel better if you took the magic hood with you, Duke Kilgore said, referring to the ancient treasure whose theft had started the entire mess. It's enchanted to translate any language on the planet. It won't let you talk back to them, of course, but you'll at least be able to understand what they're saying. Our thanks, Your Grace. Ryu nodded. We'll put it to good use. He looked around the room. Is there anything else, then? You are going to be careful, aren't you? Sylvia asked, in an unusual tone for her, it was small and hesitant, and she was looking at her feet. I know you're all strong and smart and capable, but... I still can't help thinking. She shuddered. Demons. You're going out to hunt down demons, worse ones than before. I know, Sylvia, Bao told her, smiling slightly. But it's like you said, right? We know what we're doing. Hell, I almost took down Trout all by myself. He winked. Trust us, okay? We're gonna kick ass and get rich, and what we're not gonna do is die. We're not going anywhere, any of us. Promise. You always used to say things like that, Sylvia murmured, and Ryu and Dees nodded. And I'd just laugh, because I'd know you were just going to get yourself into trouble again, like you always did. This time, though. You really mean it, don't you? She looked up and met his eyes, and then she smiled. When did you start growing up so much, Bao? Me. He chuckled, scratching the back of his head. Growing up? Come on, Sylvia, that's crazy talk. Then I must be crazy, she replied, standing up. Which gives me an excuse for this, at least. Before anybody else realized what was happening, she had pulled Bao out of his chair as well, seizing him in a firm embrace as she kissed him, long and slow. He looked stunned for a moment, but then his arms wrapped around her in return. Woo, who? Kat cheered after a few moments of surprised silence around the table. That's the way to do it. Well, Dees murmured, smiling as well. It's about time. Does this happen often, over in hometown? The chief elder inquired dryly. 
Not as such, no, Elder Alan muttered, putting a hand to his mouth to hide a smile. Good grief. I can't keep up with you kids. No comment, Ryu said, rolling his eyes. You promised, Sylvia told Bao, clearly not hearing any of the commentary. That means you can't die, Bao. You have to come back to me, now. You promised you would. I did, didn't I? Bao replied, slightly wonderingly. Yeah, I did. And I meant it, too. How about that? Guess you're right, then. He shook his head. I still don't know why the hell you would go for a guy like me, but if you've made up your mind. You've got yourself a deal. This job, and the next job, and the next. Yeah, I'll come back to you. Every single time. You would better. She rested her head on his shoulder. You would better, you louse. You promised. The meeting broke up after that. The elders left first, warping back to their own respective cities, the Simon one taking Patabe with him. A mage in the employ of Duke Kilgore conveyed Mina back to Windia similarly, after a private farewell between her and Nina, and shortly afterward, Dee's warped Elder Alan and Sylvia back to hometown. Ray was the last to leave, offering to drop the residents of their new city off before returning to the Isle of Guns, including Nero. That left the Duke and the rest of the group. Thanks again for everything, Your Grace, Ryu told Kilgore, shaking his hand, as they stood outside the manor's door. I know I've said it a dozen times already, but there's really no way to say just how much we owe you. And as I've told you just as many times, it's the least I can do for getting you all into this mess in the first place, Kilgore replied, smiling slightly. It seems my part in this adventure is more or less concluded now, but if you decide to follow the Elder's advice and make that land purchase, let me know when you're ready. If I can't help negotiate a good deal on the price for you, I'll give up my title and take a vow of poverty. We'll keep in touch, Ryu promised. And if anything more comes up that involves Oria, we'll let you know. Good luck, then, my friends, the old man told them. And may Saint Eva. And Laudan. Guide your path. They waved as they walked down to the shoreline, packs on their backs and food and water carried by the physically stronger ones. It had been a good week, but they had all known it was only a short vacation, and it was time to get back to work on the open road. Or, as the case was, the open sea. Lining up on the shore, they all glanced at Ryu, and he rang the bell they'd received from Miru. Only a few minutes later, the gigantic whale rose from the ocean, and turned himself around so that his tail lay near the shore, laying it flat for them to climb up. This is probably gonna suck, Rand muttered as they walked through the surf. Fortunately, it only came up to Sten's knees before they reached the tail. I hope this is like that river trip you took us on, Jean, or else I'm not gonna make it long. I hate sea travel. All that rocking of the waves. Ugh. He clambered up onto the tail, casks of fresh water carried under both arms. Consider this, then, Nina told him, flying easily to the top of the whale. Tunlin is quite a long ways away. What would be worse? A high-speed trip lasting only a few days, or a slower one that took all week. Come on, be nice, Sten told her, smirking, as he scampered up the whale's back quickly. And yeah, I know how ridiculous that is to hear from me. Cheer up, everybody. Kat grinned, doing the same with just as much agility despite the bulky packages of food she was carrying. We're riding across the friggin' ocean on a whale's back. How is that not cool? She's got a point, Bao agreed, making his way up the slope slowly but surely. Gotta admit, this right here? Never thought I'd see the day. Riding a whale. Enough said. All the more reason to enjoy the journey, yes. Jean said, hauling himself up next to him. Ah, life is such a wonderful adventure. Right. Ryu chuckled, stepping around the whale's blowhole and sitting down at the front of its head before leaning over. Hey, big guy. You can understand me, right? In response, the whale spouted, showering them all. Think that was a yes, chief, Sten muttered. Cool, Ryu continued, ignoring the dirty looks they were giving him now. Listen, we need to go to the Isle of Tunlin. Know where that is. The whale spouted again as it swam away from the coast, quickly picking up speed until it was knifing through the water towards the east, back steady and flat despite the waves crashing all around them. Feeling okay? Cat asked Rand. So far, he grunted, eyes closed. As long as I don't look. Ask me again in an hour. The trip was boring, but there were worse things in life. 
They continued east across the ocean, the whale carrying them without complaint, for several long days, it was fortunate that they had planned ahead and brought water and food, since there was no way to stop for any. Even so, it wasn't long before they were all sick of nothing but dried rations. A week after departing Kilgore's Manor, they finally sighted the Isle of Tunlin, a tropical paradise south of Camlin and west of Oria. The only inlet was at the south end, from there, the sides of the island rose until the northern side, a sheer 40-foot cliff. That, of course, was where the capital city was located, the only major place of habitation on the island. Palm trees dotted the gentle uphill slope, and tropical birds flitted among them. It would have been picture perfect, were it not for the giant, ectomorphic stone golem lurching its way up the beach as the whale approached. Is that... normal? Nina asked, raising an eyebrow, as they watched it lumber around from a safe distance offshore, the whale had halted there at Ryu's request. Oh, one of those things, Sten grunted, glancing at it. I hate those things. It'll take us all day to kill that. I don't think it's seen us yet, Bao pointed out. It's just keeping on going. Looks like it's walking off, Gran said, shaking his head. Good grief. If that's the kind of monster they have on this island, it's a good thing it won't take us long to get up to the city. Spending all day fending freaks like that off isn't my idea of a good time. All right, take us in, Ryu called down, and the whale obliged, bringing its tail up to the shore. They climbed off, and once they had, it turned around again to call a loud, strangely melodic farewell. Only then did it dive under the ocean once more, as they waved farewell. Once it was gone, they turned and began hiking up the island. With luck, we won't even need to go into the city or bother any of the natives. The circus should be set up outside the walls. We'll just go in and take care of business, simple as that. So what's the plan? Sten asked. I'm guessing we probably shouldn't just stroll in there. Bunch of mugs like us try that, they'll figure out some things up real fast. Well, there's me and Nina, Kat suggested. We pretend we're on a double date, that's four of us covered. Such a pity we did not consider such things earlier, or perhaps we could have brought Mademoiselle Sana along for Monsieur Sten as well, yes. Jean sighed. And Mademoiselle Sylvia for Monsieur Bao, as well as dividing myself from Mademoiselle Sisso. Then we would all have a perfect cover. Not sure I'd want to put up with Sana on that whale for a week, Bao grumbled. Besides, I already took Sylvia to this place. Don't get your hopes up, it's not gonna be worth the price of admission. He glanced at Jean and Sten. If Rand's with Kat, then the three of us could probably pull off the three drunken stooges routine. Whatever works is cool. Sten shrugged. We should go in first, then. Once the show's over, we go talk to the guy in charge, then. You got it. Ryu nodded. The good news is, if he's a demon, chances are he won't be able to resist trying to screw with us somehow. We'll just get some face time and let him give us enough rope to hang him. Unless this one's intelligent enough to know we can take him, and decides he'd prefer that didn't happen, Nina pointed out. Logically, it's only a matter of time until we run into one of them who figures that out. Maybe, but it's not gonna be this guy, Bao grunted. You've never seen him. Trust me, he's not the sharpest block off the quarry. Doesn't mean he won't be a coward, Kat added. If he's dumb, but knows we could splatter him all over the island, he might just play it cool. In which case, we intimidate him. Ryu shrugged. Might be a little tricky for us, but I'm sure we can manage something along those lines if we really try our best, right guys? They all laughed rather nastily at that, and continued up the island, until the walls around the actual city came into view about an hour later. All right, there it is. And there's the circus. A huge, brightly colored tent had been set up outside the walls, and there was a trail of people walking out of it, back towards the nearby capital. Looks like they're just finishing up a show, Bao pointed out. Bad timing on our part, I guess. Maybe not, Sten said thoughtfully. Alternative suggestion. I've been thinking, and this place doesn't really try to hide the fact that it's shady, right? Not even close. Ryu shook his head. Right, the Highlander continued. So if we went in there looking like we were trouble inspectors, our reception wouldn't be too friendly, which is why we were gonna try and blend in. But if we slid in at the end of a show and said we wanted to sort of talk to the boss about the sort of business that it's best the authorities didn't hear about. He left it hanging. If I was a crooked, demonic circus ringmaster, that'd be the sort of thing that'd turn my eyes into any signs, Rand agreed, then made a face. 
I can't believe I just said that with a straight face. What is my life? Sounds good to me, Kat chimed in. Alright, we'll give it a shot, Ryu decided. Reaching the circus, they slipped through the crowd into the first area of the tent, a complicated system of curtains and tarps inside sectioned it off almost as well as actual walls. A couple of bruisers were standing at either side of the entrance, and a bored-looking young man with dyed pink hair lounged behind a counter. Show's over, he told them laconically without even looking. Next one's in four hours if you want a ticket. Thanks, but no thanks, Ryu replied, leaning on the counter and doing his best to look sleazy. Actually, we're here on business. How's that grass man doing, these days? You kidding? The man behind the counter snorted. Nobody gives a shit about him anymore. We're already planning his farewell performance. Opening his eyes, he looked Ryu over and smiled slightly. Maybe that'd be more to your liking. Two weeks from now, we're putting him on stage one last time, along with a certain monster. Ever heard of a Creon? Thought those were supposed to be extinct, Ryu said glibly, fighting a chill. They had seen Creons before, when the city of Capitan had been infested with the insectoid monstrosities. Grassman by himself probably wouldn't stand a chance against one. That's the idea. The counterman laughed cynically. It's what you call a specialty show. Some folks pay a lot of zenny to watch something like that. Tempting as the idea sounds, we might have an even better alternative, Ryu explained smoothly. See, we know this guy who's interested in grass men, and he asked us to stop by here and talk with your boss about that. Could be you guys might be able to make even more zenny than you would at the show, if you know what I mean. That a fact. The counterman's eyes narrowed. The boss might just be interested in something like that. Problem is, we can't let anybody go through without a ticket, even if the show's not on. He glanced at the toughs, who nodded. But hey, if you guys work for a big spender like that, a hundred zenny a head should be chump change, right? A hundred zenny per ticket. Sten sputtered. That's ridiculous. Easy, man, Bao cautioned him. The big man will reimburse us for this if the deal goes off, no sweat. What he said, Ryu agreed, forcing himself to hide his wins. Let's pony, up, people. Walking forward, each of them put a hundred zenny on the counter, some of them muttering more than others. Pleasure doing business with you. The man tossed a string of tickets at Ryu. The ringmaster will be in the back, with that grass man's cage and old man Watts. Right. Ryu nodded, glancing back at his team and jerking his head towards the back, and they walked past the bruisers. The stage was empty, as were all the seats around it, and the bar as well. Walking further back, they passed stacks of equipment, and cages containing animals and monsters. More of the staff were taking care of everything, but they didn't seem to care much about the intruders backstage, perhaps they assumed that if they had been allowed through, there was a good reason. That's a Creon, all right, Nina murmured as they passed one cage, and the giant blue insect slammed against it, hissing at them. That confirms that suspicion of ours. Seems that way, Sten muttered back. At the rear of the backstage area was a cart that had been converted into a cage on wheels, with red curtains over the barred front. The grass man sat inside, back to the wall, staring into empty space, a humanoid of green leaves and white pink petals. An old man was in there as well, putting bowls of food and water on the floor, he had been running the bar when Ryu and Bao had been there last. Come now, Watts, don't be all day at it. The ringmaster of the circus boomed from outside the cage. Tall and buff, he wore a sparkling blue tunic and tights, along with a cape and a ridiculously tall top hat. His long silver hair was elaborately curled, as was his gigantic mustache, and his grin gleamed as much as his clothes. We can't take any chances on letting the property escape so close to the final performance, after all. Dilly dilly, and I might just accidentally lock you in there with him. He laughed, then turned, seeing Ryu approach. Aha. Uh -huh. And who might you be? My name's Ryu Badison, and these are my team, the Dragon Kin, Ryu said, nodding slightly as he checked the dragon's tear, and was unsurprised to see it showing the noxious black that identified a demon. We're a group of private adventurers. One of our clients has asked us to stop by and see if you would be interested in a business opportunity involving Leafy over there. He inclined his head towards the grass man. Is that so? The ringmaster murmured, twirling one end of his mustache. Interesting. My name is MC Jonathan Tusk, and I am owner and leader of the Circus Maxi Tusk. I'm glad to meet you, Mr. Battison, although... He glanced at the cage. I can't exactly see why you would be interested in this useless creature. 
Nobody wants to see him anymore, although we do have high hopes for his farewell performance. He suddenly lunged at the cage, rattling the bars. You hear that, Grass? Everybody's going to come to see you get even, and Creon's always save the head for last. Ha 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 ha. The grass man showed no sign of even hearing him, although the old man's eyes narrowed as he stepped out of the cage through a door in the side, locking it behind him. You see? Tusk sneered, stepping back. Pathetic. He just sits there all day and all night. He must get up to eat and drink. And other things, of course, if grass men even do that. But we never see him move. He's practically dead already. What could anybody possibly want with this useless sack of offal? You seem to be enjoying yourself, the grass man said abruptly, and everybody stared at it, startled. Its voice was light and androgynous, identifiable as neither male nor female, and it continued staring at empty air as it continued. Does this amuse you, M.C. Tusk? Ha! Huh. You can talk. Tusk demanded, recovering from his surprise. Well then, all the better. You'll be able to scream and shout when the Creon eats you, piece by piece. Turning back to Ryu, he clapped him on the shoulder. What do you think, Fadison? Hilarious, isn't it? A monster vegetarian show. His eyes, as black as the night sky, sparkled like there were stars inside. Maybe instead of blood, he'll spill salad dressing instead, ha 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 ha. Oh, I'm looking forward to this. You are too, aren't you? That's what you're here for, to make sure you have tickets. I should have known. Sounds like fun, all right, Ryu lied forcing a grin he didn't feel and shooting the others a glance, signaling them to do the same, though it would be difficult, Cat, in particular, looked about two steps away from throttling Tusk with her bare hands. But as they say, business before pleasure. We're actually here to discuss an alternative. Our client would like to know if, perhaps, you would be interested in letting us give the poor flower child a new home. For a price, of course. Specifically, a very large price. Interested. Tempting, tempting, Tusk murmured, stroking his mustache. Money does come before personal pleasure, I agree. But you see, this farewell performance is going to be a very profitable undertaking. Based on our forecast, we expect to rake in somewhere around 900,000 zenny. If your employer can match that price, well, then we have ourselves a deal. Otherwise... He shrugged helplessly. 900,000, Sten repeated flatly. A bit steep. Tusk asked, shaking his head. Such a pity. Then it seems the vegetable's fate is sealed. Although. There is one other option. His eyes narrowed. There are other rare and fantastic beasts in this world. Perhaps if you were able to capture one and bring it to me instead, I would trade you for it. For example, a Nyaburupa. I've heard of those, Nina murmured, her voice cold and clinical. They're rumored to be highly difficult to capture, but we should be able to pull it off. That sounds more like our kind of business anyways, Kat agreed, her voice taking on an exaggeratedly vicious tone. We might even be able to take it alive. Mostly. After a couple tries, anyways. Yeah, okay. Ryu held out his hand, and Tusk clasped it. We bring you this Yupurupa thing, you hand over Pinky. So long as it is before the final performance in two weeks. Tusk chuckled. Seeing the Yupurupa demolish the Creon should be an acceptable substitute. You would better hurry, though, I'm not going to delay the salad toss show if you're not back in time. The Yuparupa normally live in seaside caverns around Tentar, Watts, the old man, spoke up suddenly. You'll need bait, though, and the only thing that tempt Yuparupa are the owl fruit, found only in a certain forest north of the Windy Kamlin border. You've chosen the exact right time, the owl fruit will be ripe, but the Yuparupa pack won't migrate there to devour them for another month. You would never be able to pick one off from that mess. But if you get some owl fruit and find the right cave now, you might have a chance. And did I request your input, Watts? Tusk asked dryly. No, I don't believe I did. Perhaps you should stay out of this, hmm. Sorry, boss. Watts turned away, a resigned look coming over his face. No sweat, chief, Ryu told him. Just want to help your boss make money, right? Man, I wish the mugs I had working for me went out of their way to pitch in. I gotta yell and cuss at them all day to do anything except kill things. They like that part, at least. I imagine so, yes. Tusk chuckled. Well then, good luck, mister. Oh, wait. He snapped his fingers. In order to keep the Yuparupa sedate once you've managed to weaken it, you'll need the hold spell. 
Do any of your group's mages know it? Well. Ryu glanced over his shoulder. Exchanging looks, everybody except Kat shook their heads. I've never even heard of it. Nina spread her hands. It's not a very popular spell these days, I'm afraid, Tusk explained. They haven't taught it publicly for a long time. Fortunately, my ancestors knew the secret, and I've passed it on to all my boys here. Why don't I send one of them with you to help you bring the Yuparupa back once? He smiled, dark eyes glittering once more. I'm afraid ordinary bonds wouldn't work with one of those, you see. Even a steel cage. Well, they're quite feisty. He clapped his hands. Bob. Yeah, boss. A surly-looking ruffian looked up from where he was piling rope in one corner. What's up? These fine fellows are going to catch a Yuparupa for us, Tusk explained, gesturing at Ryu and company. Be a good boy and accompany them so you can use hold and make sure it doesn't escape, would you? Okay, boss. Bob walked over and nodded perfunctorily at the males of the group, while leering at the women. Be glad to help you out, haha. <laughs> we'll head over to the Owlwoods first, then, Ryu said, jerking his head towards the front of the tent. Come on, you lazy blokes, let's get out of here. Jean, you know that lodge north of the border, right? Think you can warp us there? Of course, Monsieur Ryu, Jean said after a long moment. I assume you would like to spend the night there. Beats camping out on this hellhole, Ryu grunted. We can head out back to look for the fruit the next morning. Let's go. Remember, two weeks. Tusk called after them. Or else your prize is going to be chopped sprouts. Ha 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 ha. Walking outside, they warped to the lodge, Bob following them laconically. Once they walked in, fortunately, he stuck to himself, paying for his own room before taking a corner of the tavern to lurk in with his ale. The proprietor was much more friendly to Ryu and the others, several of them had passed through recently, and the others had met him years ago. After getting rooms, they retired to a table in the tavern well away from Bob, ordering dinner and drinks. Nobody was much in the mood to talk, for obvious reasons, but Ryu made an effort anyways once their food had come. All right, let's get this on the table, he said, shaking his head. I don't like this job any more than you guys do. Honestly, I'm not sure how this even happened. We went in there looking for an excuse to do a little more demonstrating he's definitely one, by the way and we come out taking a job from him. How did that even happen? This is why I always used to tell you to let me do the talking, Bao drawled. Bad things happen when you try to do it. Shut up. Ryu shoved him. Anyways, I'm not happy with this act, either, but it's for a good cause. If we can get the grass man out of there, that's what's important. I can live with catching some critter. It is terrible, putting a grass man on display in a carnival like that, Jean murmured, nursing his wine. And to feed it to such a beast. I am not a naturally violent man, mon amis, but I must confess, I would not mourn Monsieur Tusk should it become necessary to deal with him in a more permanent fashion. Don't think any of us would, Rand grunted. Problem is, unless he starts something with us, we gotta do this the legal way. Can't say I'm a fan of our new buddy, though, Kat grumbled, glancing over at Bob. The sooner we get this over with, the better, just so we don't have to put up with him for any longer than we have to. Go back to double watches at night when we're out in the open. We're gonna have to, Ryu agreed reluctantly. One to look out for monsters, and one to keep an eye on him. Speaking of watching out for things. Sten glanced at Ryu, Kat, and Nina. You guys remember those asshole slavers who were here last time we came through? Of course we do. Nina nodded as Kat made a rude noise. As much as I'd prefer that I didn't. Why do you ask? Been listening in on the chatter around here, Sten explained. Seems those asses went out in the Owlwoods about a week ago looking for that ivy-haired girl they wanted to sell again. This time, they didn't come back, and neither has anybody else who went out there recently. Great. Ryu buried his head in his hands. So there's probably something nasty out there we'll need to watch out for tomorrow. Is there anything that's going to go right for us today? We do still have ale, Bao pointed out. And wine, too. As long as there's that, it could be worse, you know. Ah, uh, yes, the alcohol-centric system of optimism, Nina murmured. So long as one is not out of alcohol, life is good. When one is out of alcohol, life is bad. All else is irrelevant. Something like that, Ryu muttered as they all dug into their meals. 
tomorrow was going to be a busy day. All we are is entertainment.